Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the three things that Amazon gurus tend to gloss over when they're talking about starting a private label business. See, I think we all know what they love to talk about. Yup, because you know, it's a lot more fun talking about buying Lamborghinis rather than talking about things like, oh hey guys, remember when I told you that I made over $10,000 when I launched my first product? Well, I just calculated my profit and it turns out that I actually lost several thousand dollars. Oh hey guys, I just went to the bank and discovered that I have no money to pay my taxes. But these things, they may sound scary. And I'll tell you this now, I might poke fun at people who flex about buying Lamborghinis. But the truth is, unless you are a trust fund baby, you do not get these fancy expensive cars unless you are willing to embrace challenges and find ways to overcome them. And in my opinion, if you are willing to do that, then you more than deserve your Lamborghini. And actually, if you know about these potential pitfalls in advance, then you can prepare for them now so that you don't fall for them in the future. So let's do that. Let's get this video started. One, those income screenshots, that is revenue, not profit. Something that is very important to keep in mind is that when someone shares an income screenshot of how much money that they've made, that is the total amount of money that they have made in sales. So when someone posts a screenshot saying that they made $10,000 on Amazon last month, that doesn't take into account the expenses they paid to make those sales, like the cost of purchasing inventory, the cost of shipping, Amazon FBA fees, or marketing fees. Now, usually if someone is making a constant monthly revenue from their FBA business, then that does mean that it is most likely profitable. Sometimes you will make more, sometimes you will make less, but a good yardstick to aim for when creating an Amazon FBA product is to, in the long term, be making a 30% profit margin. Now, this isn't a strict rule. Some sellers prefer to sell items that have smaller profit margins but do large amounts of volume, and they make up for the smaller profit margins by the sheer amount of items that they sell. So yes, sales do usually indicate profit, but there is one big exception to this, and this is the very first month that you launch a product. And in fact, if you launch a product right, there is a really good chance that you are going to lose money. Why? Well, it's because of the money that you will spend during the advertising and marketing phase of your launch. As I explained in my video, how to launch your first Amazon FBA product. When you launch a product on Amazon, your goal is to try to increase your sales velocity ASAP. So let's say that you wanted to sell your own insulated flask on Amazon and you wanted to make free organic sales from people that found it using the Amazon search engine. Well, what you need to do is manipulate the Amazon algorithm so that when someone searches for an insulated flask on Amazon using the search bar, your listing is in the top of the search results. Now there are several different reasons why the Amazon search algorithm has chosen these particular flasks to sit at the top of the search results, but the number one factor is their sales velocity. In other words, Amazon favors items that are selling more than others, and it makes sense that they would because the more items Amazon sells, the more money that they make. And so what smart sellers do is they employ a strategy that my friend Anthony over in Seller Tradecraft calls his balls to the walls strategy. It's when you go to Amazon and use a tool like Jungle Scout to see roughly how many sales a month your top competitors are making. You then do everything in your power to either match the sales that they are making or even better, beat them for at least two weeks. If you do that, then what Amazon does is it looks at your flask and it goes, oh hey, this flask is selling better than all of the other ones on there. Let's start promoting this one instead because it's making us the most money. And so how can you get lots of sales over this two week period? Well, there are several different strategies. You could offer discount coupons, you could run paid ads, and you could massively discount your product to help encourage sales. But all of these strategies cost money, lots and lots of money. 
That 30% profit margin comes from someone purchasing your item after finding it using the search bar, not from someone finding it from a paid advertisement. So the moral of the story here is that if someone excitedly tells you that they made $10,000 in their first month launching their product, keep in mind that there is a very high chance that they did not bank any of that as profit. And when you launch a product, if you plan to run a big marketing campaign to push your item to the top of the Amazon search results, then make sure you have some money in reserve to pay for all of the costs involved. But it's worth it. If you are willing to put in the upfront investment, then you can set yourself up to be making free, passive, organic sales into the future. Two, to make a lot of money, you need a lot of money. All right, so here is the cold, harsh truth. If you are looking to launch a product that is going to make $10,000 in total sales each month, then you're probably going to be looking at needing at least $9,000 for startup costs. Yep. To see why, we just need to do the maths. Let's say that we're selling this $20 bento lunchbox here. We can work out roughly how much you would need to launch this product. Checking with Jungle Scout, as you can see, it's selling around 500 units each month for about $10,000 in revenue. So let's go with a 30% profit margin for the seller. Again, we don't know the true profit margin. It could be more, it could be less, but let's go with the average profit margin of 30%. If we allow for that, then that means that we are looking at about $7,000 a month in expenses. But importantly, not all of those expenses are upfront. You see, a significant chunk of your money as a private label seller is going to go towards Amazon FBA fees, and this gets taken out of the money that the customer pays you. So taking a look at this Bento lunchbox, we can see that the Amazon FBA fees for this item are around $7 per unit. And doing the maths, $7 times 500 units is $3,500. So if we take our $7,000 in expenses and minus from that our Amazon FBA fees of $3,500 a month, then that means that we can assume that the seller is paying roughly $3,500 for the shipping and the cost of the units, which works out to be roughly around $7 a unit. And these costs are upfront, obviously. You need the startup money to purchase your inventory and then actually ship it into Amazon. But that's not all. Because it takes time to manufacture inventory and to restock, you're going to want to purchase at least two and a half months worth of inventory in advance. This is especially important if you plan on running a big launch with the goal of selling as many units as you can so that you can rise to the top of the Amazon search results. So $3,500 times two and a half months is $8,750 in inventory and shipping costs alone. Plus you are going to need to have extra money for things like tools, package design, product samples, and product photography. So all in all, to launch a product that will get you a cool looking income screenshot of $10,000, you're going to need over $9,000 in startup money to launch that product. Now for some of you, that may not be much money. But for some of you, that may be a lot of money that you don't have. If that is you, here is my tip. You don't need $9,000 to get started on Amazon. You can get started with much smaller amounts. But you need to be realistic about the types of products that you pick. Don't pick a product like the Bento Lunchbox that is selling 500 plus units a month. If you've got a startup budget of say $2,500, then look for products that are selling roughly around 100 units a month. And a big plus for choosing products like this is that oftentimes they have less competition because Amazon FBA sellers prefer to go after items that have bigger monthly sales volume. So it's going to be a lot easier to dominate the Amazon search results. Three, it's very easy to go into debt. And finally, this is one of the most common traps that I see high level FBA sellers fall into. And the crazy thing is that for many of them, if they just slowed down and they managed their money better, they could have avoided this. I have a friend, he has a very successful Amazon FBA business doing over $100,000 a month in sales, which means he's making tens of thousands of dollars every month in profit. Early last year, he dropped a bombshell on me. He told me that he was thinking of cleaning up shop and then selling the business and getting out of it. And I was shocked and I said to him, wait, why would you sell it? And that's when he shared with me his cash flow issues. And I was like, oh, it's happened to you. See, here is what he had done. Christmas time was rolling around and he was like, oh, sales are going to increase. I need to massively up my inventory. 
but he also wanted to take advantage of this time period to launch some more products, but his business didn't have enough cash to purchase both. So what did he do? He used up all of his business's cash and he maxed out his debt to be able to purchase both. Now using debt to make money in business is a perfectly fine thing to do because of the fact that you make money from the money that you borrow. So what's the problem here? Well, that's what he thought until his personal bills started to come on in. He had car repayments, mortgage repayments, tax payments, student loan repayments. He had thousands of dollars in bills, but he had maxed out all of the money in his business and he had maxed out all of his access to debt. And so even though he had a successful business, he hadn't managed his cash flow. And so he ended up getting into a really bad spot because he had no money to pull from his business and he had no access to debt to pay for his bills. This is a cash flow problem. And it's a very common reason why profitable businesses fail because even though they will get the money to pay for the expenses tomorrow, they need to pay for them now. Tomorrow isn't good enough. Now, luckily, this story has a happy ending. He didn't sell the business. Instead, what he did was he ended up getting a book called Profit First and used the advice in it to fix his cash flow woes. Now, instead of spending all the money and debt that he has access to to massively grow and scale his business, every month he makes sure to take out a salary for himself. And then he uses the money that's left over to grow and scale the business. Talking to this friend reminded me actually of another friend that I've talked about on this channel before. And at the time, he was a new private labeler. He had spent all of his money on inventory and shipping, and he had not set aside the correct amount of money to pay for import duties. So when the bill arrived, he had no way to pay for it. And he almost lost all of his inventory and the money that he had invested in it. Now, luckily he was able to scramble for loans from friends and family, but it was a really close call. So both of my friends, despite being in very different places with their Amazon FBA businesses, learned the folly of overextending. So don't make this mistake for yourself. Make sure that you have money set aside to pay for unexpected bills. Thanks for watching. If you liked this honest advice and would like to learn even more about selling online, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted and click that little notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And before you run off and watch another video, I've got a freebie that I'd like to offer you. Here at Wholesale Ted, we have a free ebook, how to make $10,000 a month online with dropshipping. You'll find a link on how you can download it in the video description below.